Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. Yay! Happy Friday to you. Happy Friday. Hey, you guys, I hope you guys are doing good, honey. So, yes, today's Friday. It's time for another podcast. Um, YouTube is seriously tripping, okay? So, if you don't know, I had did the video yesterday on the whole T.I. Tiny situation and the lawsuits being brought forward. So, there was a clip in the hour-long video that I put in there. And basically, it's a video of the girls, I guess, saying their testimony and stories, so YouTube hit me up with a copyright and was like, you know, this needs to be removed. If not, it's going to be a copyright. So I go through, I remove the clip out of the video. Then they turn around and demonetize the video. So YouTube definitely does not want certain things out there. And it's sad because it's almost like they're siding with the perpetrators or the alleged perpetrators as opposed to the victims. Anything serious they do not want on YouTube. So if you guys um, are wondering about that clip and why it's missing, go to the podcast. I upload all of my videos also on the podcast. In the event things have to get chopped and sliced on YouTube, you guys can hear the testimonies in the TI podcast that I posted yesterday. So anyways, today I wanted to talk about some situations that are missed, and these are more serious topics, more sensitive, so they're going on my podcast. So if you guys do not know, the Daily Beast and several other legitimate outlets are now reporting that Nicki Minaj and her husband, Kenneth Zupetti, um, they went on a campaign to silence a victim that he raped, okay? This woman named Jennifer was raped by Kenneth Zupetti. This happened close to 20 years ago. And I had talked about this on my live stream probably two months ago. She initially interviewed with a woman named Nosy Whole Live. So she had an interview with her, and I loved the interview. And at that point, she was not comfortable showing her face, but we heard her voice and everything else. The reason why all of this was being brought to the forefront, like I said in that live stream, was because was because Kenneth thought he was above the law and that he didn't have to register as a registered, you know, sex offender in the state of California. And so once they found out that he had been in Cali, because usually when you move, you have to let your PO, you have to let that state know within 10 days. He chose not to register. Meanwhile, he's walking around, chilling, driving Nikki's cars, having a good old funky time. And the U.S. Marshals came after him and were like, look, you're going to jail right now because you didn't register as a sex offender. So he was picked up and locked up. In that time, people started trying to contact the victim, Jennifer, and were basically trying to bribe her, shame her, and threaten her into recanting her story that happened to her when she was 16 years old because of who he's with now and because was making Nicki Minaj, quote unquote, look bad. So at that point, Jennifer was tired of the harassment from friends, family members, people from her old neighborhood who knew about the situation. And she decided to come out and tell her story. Soon after that, she also went on to Nosy's platform and they talked about it further. And so during that time, we find out that Jennifer is not a white woman. She's biracial. She was raised around black folks. OK, her mother was even one of those white women who was raised in the hood who acted black. So this is not a case of, you know, this lily white woman lying on this young black boy. And that is the image that Nicki Minaj was trying to paint. And she's tried to paint that image not once but twice. And so right now. It's being stated that the investigators are now, you know, moving forward with this case and that the U.S. Marshals are involved. I'm going to go ahead and read to you guys some of the information from the Daily Beast. So they're saying this. When you're somebody's wife, you've got to be even more prayed up. Nicki Minaj told her audience in 2019 on her Apple Music show, Queen Radio, because you got to cover your husband in prayer. The rapper was responding to criticism that she received from marrying convicted sex offender Kenneth Zupetti. Nicki Minaj claimed, claimed that Petty was wrongfully accused of attempted rape at the age of 15 and that his victim had actually written a letter to the judge back in 1995 asking to recant her statement only to reverse the course after she found out she could go to jail for 90 days. But white is right, Nicki Minaj said. 
But Petty's victim, who has come forward using just her first name, Jennifer, is not white. Her mother is white and her father is black. Both she and Petty were 16 years old at the time of the assault, which she reported immediately. She says she's never submitted a letter recanting anything, but alleges that associates of Nicki Minaj and Petty spent months last year harassing her to do so, going so far as to offer hundreds and thousands of dollars on their behalf at one point. Jennifer says she also spoke with Minaj herself. Minaj and Petty did not respond to requests for comment. Jennifer moved three times in 2020 out of fear for her safety. The final time out of state, separating herself from her 22-year-old daughter. Since then, she's come forward and the gossip blogosphere has exploded. And Nicki Minaj stands and even some estranged family members have attempted to discredit her claims. The state of California dismissed its case against Petty for failing to register as a sex offender last year in light of similar federal charges for which Petty faces trial in June. In the interview with the Daily Beast, Jennifer described this as a mindfuck that began last March when Petty's arrest in Cali prompted a web of family members and neighbors to contact her on his and Nicki Minaj's behalf. Jennifer also stated that she had been in contact with the U.S. Marshals, told her that an investigation of Petty is underway and they found evidence. A source familiar with the conversation confirmed this and said that the authorities called the investigation a high priority case. I'm hoping for the truth to come out and whatever comes of that truth, so let it be, Jennifer said. For a while, she tried to avoid implicating other people. But now after everything that has happened, it's like these people were willing to sacrifice me so this guy could remain in the public eye, she said said i feel like my family was willing to sacrifice me so that is what jennifer told to the daily blog and i want you guys to go ahead and listen to this clip um with this interview that she did recently with nosy whole live and you can see her and she's clearly a mixed woman this is not a white woman i mean we were never in a relationship you lied Nicki Minaj. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm saying to the camera that me and Kenneth Petty was never in a relationship. Nicki Minaj, you lied on your Instagram and you lied on Queen Radio about those comments that you made about me were bold faced lies. I don't know who told you that, but you still have repeated it with the platform that you have. You did reach out to me. You did offer me to come to LA. You also offered to send your publicist, Joe, out to see me. So you guys just heard that snippet. And, you know, for y'all who don't know, when this first became public, which was about two, three months ago, the harassment has not stopped. OK, so she also went on to tell the Daily uh, Beast this. So she says four days after Petty's arrest last March, a man named Barry, who Jennifer remembered had been close with her brother when they were all school age, reached out to her. Jennifer didn't think much about it at first when Barry mentioned Minaj and Petty. But when Barry allegedly told Jennifer that Minaj wanted to speak to her, even as she agreed to share her phone number, Jennifer didn't believe what was happening. Next thing I know, my phone rings and it's her. As Jennifer recounts, Nikki told her that she heard she was willing to help them out. And if there's anything you need, the rapper allegedly offered to fly Jennifer to Los Angeles or to fly her publicist to Atlanta. It seemed at first the Petties wanted to discuss some type of non-disclosure agreement, Jennifer said. Some type of some type of pact in which they vow not to speak about her publicly and she do the same. At the same time, she recalls telling Minaj this. Listen, I just need you to know, woman to woman, this really happened. Minaj allegedly told Jennifer that she wanted to have her number, but the two never spoke again. And the number has since been disconnected. Instead, Jennifer said her brother, with whom she's not particularly close, called her within days of the conversation with Minaj to tell her that a man named Jamie from New York had called their cousin in North Carolina, offering $500,000 if Jennifer spoke with the lawyer representing the Petty. When asked about the offer, Barry allegedly denied that the money could have come from Minaj or Petty. Jennifer recalled him insisting that Petty had no money and that Nicki Minaj wouldn't give Petty money either. So I was confused as to how all of this was happening around me, she said. I'm like, you say Nicki's not involved, but yet she's the one who called me. Barry, meanwhile, allegedly wanted Jennifer to write a letter recanting her rape allegations from 1994. She didn't want to do that either. But unlike her brother and her cousin, Barry now knew where she lived and that made her very nervous. 
Rather than say no outright and risk retaliation, Jennifer says she stalled Barry by expressing worry over being dragged back into court or even prosecuted. Barry allegedly began sending her information on the New York Statute of Limitations and insisting that she could not get in trouble and even had her speak with multiple lawyers in order to convince her. The Daily Beast has reviewed a screenshot from text conversations between Jennifer and Charles Middlestad, a criminal defense investigator who declined to comment. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.